This is a server backup manager software solution being exploited and compromised to gain remote code execution and push down arbitrary code like malware, and in this case, ransomware, to all the connected registered agents, hosts, and endpoints. This has been accomplished by taking advantage of an authentication bypass vulnerability and then leveraging and chaining functionality within the application itself to eventually gain code execution and deploy and push out arbitrary code to everything else. And this backup software is running on a Linux machine as root. So you, as a threat actor compromising this, are already the sysadmin, the super user. You have fully compromised this machine and you can do whatever damage you as a hacker might do. Now this vulnerability has been patched. There is a fix available. There is a security reach that has been published online, pushed down to all cloud instances. And for those users that need to manually update, you can do that for the R1 Server Backup Manager SE software. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the authentication bypass vulnerability, and then how myself and a great friend and fellow researcher, Caleb Stewart, had pushed this even further to be not just the authentication bypass, but that remote code execution and potential supply chain risk of pushing down arbitrary code or malware to all connected hosts. So first things first, credit where credit is due. This story all dates back to October 14th. 2022, where a Twitter user, Frykos, I believe his name is uh, Florian Hauser, forgive me if I'm getting your name wrong, my friend, of Code White GmbH, had shared some screenshots of Burp Suite. You know, Burp, the web application penetration testing tool. And in these screenshots, they had showcased what HTTP requests and responses could come from a ConnectWise or R1Soft server backup manager SE solution and perform this authentication bypass. We caught wind of this and we thought, wow, you know, there's a significant impact in even just that authentication bypass and then the sensitive file leak and other information you might be able to retrieve. So we took a look into it. By the time that we got a chance to look, that tweet by Frykos had been removed and taken offline, but hey, the actual images and the text of the tweet was still stored in our Slack cache. So we were able to get a little bit more know-how to explore and poke at this thing thanks to that. Some backstory, this authentication bypass vulnerability is not in ConnectWise and R1Soft Server Backup Manager SE solution itself. It is in a library or a Java library called ZK. ZK is used for dynamic desktop and rich interfaces and online applications, yada, yada, yada. And Florian or Frykos's peer and colleague Marcus had found this flaw and vulnerability in the ZK library back in May of 2022. Marcus reported this vulnerability to ZK and through the process of responsible disclosure, a new security advisory was released and ZK pushed out a new version, I believe 9.6.2, that addresses this issue and fixes and patches that problem as of May, 2022. And at that time, way back in May, that vulnerability wasn't seen as too critical until Marcus's colleague, Florian, or Frykos as we're tracking, had found this issue present in so many other applications, R1Soft, Server Backup Manager SE being one of them. So in June of 2022, Florian discovers that this weakness is in fact present in the Server Backup Manager software and goes to notify ConnectWise. Evident from the tweets, unfortunately, there didn't seem to be a response. And and after the classic traditional 90 days of disclosure per the responsible disclosure process, Florian is free to share this vulnerability and he teases it with those screenshots that we saw online in October. That's why we have this timeline from May, June, even to October following the 90 days disclosure guidelines. Now, when we catch wind of this, we're kind of scratching our heads and wondering, can this be weaponized further? Can this be exploited even more and more damage be done because a backup manager solution is kind of a big deal, right? That's potentially a crown jewel for a threat actor because it's likely going to be running with high privileges and you have access to all the other machines, potentially, that are using that service management for backups. So my good friend Caleb and I went to work trying to recreate this proof of concept. And now I'm telling the story, let me add the absolute disclaimer, we have not seen any exploitation in the wild for the authentication bypass vulnerability or our own further and expanded remote code execution. 
execution proof of concept. It would be irresponsible and just way too freaking risky to share this proof of concept out and about. Threat actors, malware authors, all those bad shady people could use this for legitimate nefarious purposes. So we will not be sharing any code. We are telling the story at the high level of what was done, but we are not offering the tooling. We are not giving, hopefully, uh, any insights as to how you could just spin this up. Be good people. Do not do this. The usual disclaimers to do not be a cyber criminal. So we started to chip away recreating this and we were running into walls. We were falling down rabbit holes and couldn't quite get what Florian or Frycos had. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'll reach out. So I messaged him on Twitter and then that started a new long and everlasting friendship, right? Just a little bit after I messaged him, uh, we ended up figuring it out. Uh, a few hours after we got started, we had recreated that authentication bypass vulnerability, but Frycoast responded. So we started to banter a little bit and I explained that we were curious, can this be pushed further? Can we expand this exploit and can we push the envelope on what damage might be done? Frycoast explained that the tweets were taken down because he didn't want to offer any tooling to script kitties. And again, those bad, evil, nefarious threat actors that I was just alluding to, stop, don't be one of those, go away if you're a cyber criminal. And of course, we needed time for the industry to patch and there to be a proper security advisory sent out. And that is why I am releasing this video and sharing the story after the fact. Patch has been released, security updates pushed down, and we can tell the story safely. Anyway, we successfully replicated the authentication bypass vulnerability and then we were thinking, what's next? So we started looking around the application as the admin user. The auth bypass let us have full access and free reign to the application as if we were an already registered admin user. And now you might think as a budding penetration tester, red teamer, adversary emulator, whatever, that, oh, you might be able to do traditional cross-site scripting attacks, like that sort of idea, right? Oh, you force a password reset or you create a new user or you do unique things that might like, give you better access. Weird thing, this ZK library, this Java framework is a little weird. It's not traditional classic HTTP requests to, or posting, hey, change password, add new user. It has this desktop designed uh, feature set, right? So every time that you move your mouse or every time that you click on a button or widget, or every time you enter some text into an input field, it sends a message or event signal over to the server and that's processed server side. And then ultimately, once you click submit, all you do is send the you've clicked submit button and that's it. Everything else has already been processed from the previous entries. That meant that weaponizing this or taking it further would take a little bit more handholding. It wasn't impossible, it was just kind of annoying to have to replicate or send multiple requests simulating a regular desktop user experience. But Caleb and I were clicking around, we were exploring, we were just so interested in like, what is here? Can we do anything more with this? So we tried to explore each and every aspect and facet of the application. We were decompiling Java code. We found some hysterical Easter eggs like a Konami cheat code, up, up, down, down, left, right, A, B, you know the drill. Even some hilarious Java class names. But the thing that we had the most success with was uploading a database driver. See, the server backup manager SE software allowed the administrator to upload their own JDBC driver or Java a database connector thing? I don't know Java. And we had the idea, ooh, I wonder if we could leverage that. So we did some due diligence, we did our research, we were asking Uncle Google saying, hey, what can we do with a Java database driver? And we found that there is even an already ready sample to hey, have a backdoored database driver. So we slapped that in, tried to tinker with things a little bit, chain a little bit more of our exploit, and boom, RCE. There is an interesting gimmick when updating this database driver, by the way, because it will be uploaded to the server and then loaded when Java is being kickstarted or initializing if there isn't already one present. If there is not a driver present, it'll load it automatically. But if there is something there, we'll have to wait for the server to reboot or we'll have to wait for the service to be restarted and then the code will execute and detonate really. This is kind of an interesting thing because if applications are patched and there is already a malicious backdoor database driver present, well, it's a certain amount of persistence, right? It's like, okay, it'll just be detonated the next time the thing kicks off. It's a weird sort of web shell parallel. I don't know, you know what I mean? 
and it is already running as root, so you have super user permissions, you can do whatever you want, and we also found that, hey, we could download sensitive files like, oh, the configuration files, or even the product subscription key, server private keys, credential key stores, lots of juicy stuff that an adversary might be interested in. And through all of our tinkering and finagling with the software, we had found and made sense of the REST API. So now that we were an authenticated user, we could actually do more things with the application, like run commands on all the affected agents. All the registered hosts, computers, devices that are connected to the backup manager to have their backups managed can now have code pushed down to them. And you've got this wild domino effect supply chain. At the time of us poking through this thing, there are about almost 5,000 server backup manager services publicly accessible on the open internet. And that does not include all of the downstream connected hosts and computers and devices that have their backups being managed by the software. Again, that's that supply chain risk. And hey, this is not to be all doom and gloom. By the way, I know, hey, I don't mean to be spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and like, hey, the sky is falling with all these supply chain risk, RCE vulnerabilities, and crap like that. No, I just want to give this the attention that I think it deserves, and that like, this is a severe critical vulnerability. And I have to mention, this isn't specific to that server backup manager SE software. Right? And sure, you've got the trickle down effect, which is spooky in itself, but you have to remember that this original vulnerability that made this all possible, huge kudos and credit to Marcus and finding this for the ZK library, is that it is in the upstream ZK library. So everything else, all the other applications that could be very well using this Java library in a similar, like weird log4j sense, that could internally be enumerated after you go through your authentication bypass. And then exploitation from there depends on the application, but the auth bypass opens the door. And for one thing, that gives me a little bit more, I don't know, sense of severity or, or understanding and like, wow, what damage an auth bypass might do. And again, don't mean this to be doom and gloom. What I want to bring this to you is really a rally and, and, and a rallying cry, like saying like, hey, security researchers, hey, uh, ethical hackers and folks that want to make the security landscape better, they want to improve this thing. And that's why we're super duper grateful for working with Connect no Eyes and their generous understanding and transparency and help. And that a patch is available, we're notifying partners, we're keeping the community and people informed and aware. And now, we gotta keep going, we gotta keep improving things. Like there are still new things to fix and we have to do that due diligence and responsible disclosure for other ZK libraries or applications that use that tooling to go fix more things. So uh, forgive me for my rant and rambling and I'm not trying to get on a soapbox here, but I think that's the message that I absolutely wanted to bring with this video. Sure it's cool, high flying, flashy and fancy to drop and whoa, ransomware down the pipeline supply chain, but look, this is just a call to action to raise awareness and get more people in the mix to fight the good fight and improve security, better the landscape. If you yourself use this server backup manager SC software, please patch, please stay up to date, please keep your ear to the ground with everything that ConnectWise is chatting about, that we are chatting about. We're just trying to get this information out there. Uh, in the link below in the description, we have our full formal write-up where we include indicators of compromise. Well, again, there's no exploitation in the wild that we know of, but this is just taking advantage of the features and functionality that the application provides. So indicators of compromise is kind of hard to put out there, but there's our best effort with some server logs and things that we can key off of. Thank you for letting me ramble and rant for a little bit. I, for one, think this is kind of a cool story. I'm very pleased and proud of this because this is work that truthfully, hey, Caleb and I spent and poured 20, 30 hours, you know, burning the midnight oil, just going down every single rabbit hole. And there are other incredible folks that were all along the ride. And uh, look, let me add the note here that this is all something that we kind of still stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Like this wouldn't have happened if the great research and work from Code White GmbH between Marcus and his team and Florian Frykos and like, it's a community effort. And that's why when something hits the fan or when there's a new flashy vulnerability or exploit out and about, look, it takes everyone playing in concert. It takes us all being a team. It's a team sport, <laughs> a cheesy thing to say, but that's the reality of it. And uh, I hope that you can be a part of it just as well. 
So please jump in the fight, and uh, hopefully there's some sweet intel to get things started for you down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this recap, and I hope it makes you a little bit more aware, a little bit more educated, and a little bit inspired to go improve the security landscape for all the right reasons. Thanks for watching.